Hi, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to Back Chat. Welcome to Move with Scoliosis. So Back Chat is my is my baby. It's my little podcast here. Um, it's my YouTube live stream, which at the moment we've got every few weeks or so. So welcome if you are new to this channel. It's all about moving with scoliosis. I am a yoga and Pilates teacher, so that is my background. And um, I've been doing this for a while, probably since 2018 now. And I love to chat with people about, um, obviously, yoga and Pilates. I love to chat about anything to do with scoliosis. Today, we are actually going to be talking about pain um, because that is a very, very big topic which always comes up. Um, and yes, I've been announcing it on social media, obviously, already. So I know there's a few of you already tuning in. Um, so make sure if you're not driving, if you feel free to um, just jump into the conversation and you can just ask your questions and then I can just bring them, um, show them to John and he will uh, see if, if he can answer them for you. But before I bring him on, I just wanted to let you know, um, I've got a lot of YouTube content. Again, if you are new to this channel and you don't know where to start, um, I've tried to make it a little bit more simple by creating a little quiz so it's called the roadmap um, you will find it in the description below you just answer a few questions and then it will start to suggest a few videos that you can start with so a little bit more personalized than just um, looking at all the playlists and just being a little bit overwhelmed so you can say for example if you've got spinal fusion or um, if you've got an S curve, if you've got a C curve scoliosis, and then hopefully it will direct you to some relevant content. Good. So I can see Laura and Liz are here already. Um, so let me start by getting John on here. So John Gribben is um, the CEO of Curable, and I have been mentioning this app a few times already. I've kind of been teasing it. Um, and I thought, I think the best way to really understand what it's all about is just getting the CEO on the show and telling us all about it. So let me find him. There he is. Hello. <laughs> Hi, John. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good. Thank you so much for making the time. It's great to be here with you. Thanks for yeah. having me. Yeah. So, so tell me, whereabouts, or just for our listeners here, whereabouts are you at the moment? Uh, I'm in Denver, Colorado, in the United States. Right, and this is where your where the magic is happening, basically, where the well, is. I guess yes. <laughs> we we have some magic happening here in Denver. We have some magic happening um, in other areas in the yeah. U.S. Um, we we kind of uh, you know in during COVID and then coming out of the COVID um, situation, we really got into the um idea of not letting geography hold us back from adding the right people to our team so um we have people in california and, and in um in chicago and you know kind of all around the country brilliant excellent lovely i've got lots of people obviously interested in this topic which is amazing so um we've got a few people saying hello here um I thought a good place to start might be because, you know, I, I find this fascinating, obviously. Um, I, I when we first kind of chatted, I said to you, it's, it's kind of it's a um, it's a it's an interesting topic, but it's not an easy topic. Right. It's not kind of um, a quick one to to really understand. So I thought, why don't we start with kind of what what brought you to this? So what made you um, create this app? What's your kind of personal journey with pain? Yeah, well, I have I have a personal journey with pain. Yes. Um, the I always thought, you know, when I would hear about startup companies, I, th I always thought it was a little bit corny um, to, you know, start a company based on a problem that you personally have. Uh, but I've here we are. I've found myself in that exact situation. Um, so I had 
chronic. I, the first time I felt back pain symptoms was in when I was about 19 years old, I was in university. Um, and from there, it was just, you know, increasing pain um, in, in, in intensity and in frequency um, throughout my 20s into my 30s. Um, tried all different types of interventions short of surgery, pretty much everything short of surgery, M you know, hundreds of sessions of physical therapy, uh, massage, injections, oral medications, topical medications, you name it. Um, and so for 15 years, no relief. Uh, and then I was introduced to the, the scientific principle that, um, that somebody's brain, my brain, all brains, um, are actually the control center for pain, uh, both acute pain, like when you put your hand on a stove, um, and chronic pain when pain lasts for a long time. Um, and so once I learned about those principles, um, I started to, you know, learn ways to use that science to, um, improve my own symptoms. Um, and then it was even still after I was able to improve my own back pain symptoms, um, it was still a few years until I had met my co-founders at Curable who also experienced decades of uh, chronic pain symptoms all over their bodies as well. Uh, and then we got together and, and um, asked ourselves, how come more people don't know about the brain's role in pain? And maybe it should be our job to educate them. Mm. Uh, it was from that those questions um, that Curable was born. Mm, brilliant. Yes, because you've got, I mean, I, I, to be honest, I don't quite remember how I came across the app, but I know, so in the kind of scoliosis world, um, David Hanscom is one of the people who um, uh, is, known right and and he's uh, so what, for those of you who don't know him he 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 was a spinal surgeon mm -hmm. right he, who then wrote quite an amazing book about this topic and kind of moved away from from that being his job right operating on people and doing that surgery um so how did you kind of um how did you find all these these people and how did you convince them to um to be part of this uh one one by one i get well it, you know slowly over time when it, it it there's a snowball effect i guess when you start um an organization uh at first you know no one knows who you are or you know really um can take you should take you seriously um but over time i think folks like dr hanscom who is on our scientific advisory board um and many others many of his colleagues and many of the you know, um, the great thought leaders and researchers in the world of chronic pain are now a part of our team and a part of our sphere. Um, and I think that is because there's an altruistic element to what we're doing, or that is the centerpiece really of what we're doing is trying to help people. And I think folks like Dr. Hanscom and others are on the same path um, in trying to help people. And so when you do meet come into contact with folks who have the same goals, which is really to spread the word to get this scientific information out there. Um, you quickly become friends and you quickly realize that, you know, two is better than one and you can help each other um, reach more people. And so uh, Dr. Hanscom in particular uh, was a big help for me in, in my own journey, because I, I believe his, the, his first book, the book you're referring to is called Back in Control. Yeah. Um, and it's a, you know, it's written by, he's a, like you say, he's a former spine surgeon. He was doing the procedures that he now advocates folks to, to never do. Um, and, and he had his own, you know, epiphany, uh, with the reading the science, treating a lot of patients and seeing that actually the best treatment for most of his patients was not surgery was focusing on their brain. Um, so, I mean, I'm, when I'm when I read his book, I was thinking, wow, if he this is I mean, he you know, his whole medical education, his whole, um, you know, financial livelihood uh, mm -hmm. was based in this one area of cutting folks open and, and, and giving them surgery for this 
and now he believes something completely different based on scientific evidence, um, there's something here, you know? Mm -hmm. And so we got together years ago and, um, and he, and like I said, many others who are now part of the curable scientific advisory, advisory board and team, um, all on the same mission, really. Mm. So when, so what was kind of the, what was the, the part that kind of convinced you or, or what was the thing that you would say helped you um, the most really? Um, because it's, it's a little bit of a, it's, it's a tricky one. So you've been suffering from pain, obviously, for years, and maybe even considering having surgery, right? So mm. there must have been something where you thought, oh, there's something wrong. Um, yeah. What was it that at the end of the day helped you? Yeah. I always thought there was something wrong. Of course, you know, um, discs. I, I mean, I've seen MRIs of my back and there are abnormal discs going on like there are in most of, in many, many, many of us, you know, um, the thing is that an abnormal shape of a disc or a bulge or a herniation doesn't necessarily correlate the pain that is a, a very well established scientific neuro, you know, neuroscience fact, um, in, in the medical literature. Uh, so, but you know, as a person in their twenties who has seen pictures of their own discs and they're bulged, you don't know that research. You just going, Oh, somebody's telling you, look at these abnormalities. This is where your pain's coming from. And you of course believe that, mm -hmm. um, to answer your question, I think for me, it was, I had reached a level of desperation. You know, I, it had been 15 years and nothing was working. And of course I did think that something was wrong with me. Um, and I think I was just ready to hear a different perspective. Um, that, that readiness was also facilitated by the fact that the individual, a uh, friend of mine named Tony, who initially told me about this stuff. And he's not an expert either. We were on a, he and I were on a, a walk together, a hike one time. And he brought this brain, you know, brain first uh, approach up with me. And he's, he's not a doctor. He's not a researcher. He's, he's a, you know, a lay person. Um, he was almost like the right messenger too, for me. Mm -hmm. You know, he's not a, it, it, it sounds when, when, when someone first hears that, um, that their pain is in the brain and we can get into this, but there are a lot of objections to that general idea. You know, is it too hippy dippy? Um, are you saying that my pain's not real? That I don't really- Am I just making it up? I'm making yeah. it up, right? My pain's in my head, which means like I'm making it up. That's, um, but for, in this particular individual is, my friend Tony is just not like, that he's not a he's not somebody who would say that to me you know mm -hmm. and so if, i was like if he's saying this to me I, I better listen you know this is this is unexpected kind of from him you know mm -hmm. um so he was the right messenger at the right time and the right level of desperation for me mm -hmm. then i had to do my own research i had to i got that information from my friend and then had to really dig in and go okay what is he talking about who are what is the research is this real? Is this what's going on? Is this, is this the, where, what we're now learning more about pain? Um, and then once you learn, um, in some cases that alone, just the learning can make people feel relief, can mm -hmm. people feel, uh, enable people to feel better. Um, in my case, I had to do some work. I had to work on myself. I had to learn more, not just about the science of pain, but I had to learn more about John and why I, why I in particular have pain um, and work through those things as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was, it's this, you know, combination of timing, desperation, who the messenger was, and then having to put the work in myself. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm curious now, what did Tony say? <laughs> I had just had a really bad, for, for folks who are, are watching or listening and, um, have back pain, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes it's worse than others. And sometimes you in the middle of the night say, and this is in my case, in the middle of the night, something just, it was like a spring, you know, popped in my back, which happened at that time in my life that happened a couple of times a year. So it was kind of like my quarterly, you know, back blowout. 
um, we had a trip, my family and I had a trip planned um, the, a few days later. So I was kind of laid up in bed for a few days, barely made it in onto this trip, onto the plane and into this trip. And it was to meet some friends and be outside and, you know, um, enjoy a vacation. And it was on the vacation we were walking and Tony said, so I hear you have some back pain. And I was, of course, like, no, no, none of your business. You know, like, I'm fine. I, I could barely walk, you know. Um, he's like, okay, that's that's cool. That's it. You can do do what you need to do. But I, I just want to let you know that I, I had back pain for 10 years. And he said it like past tense, like I had back pain. I said, oh, well, oh, okay. So you don't have back pain anymore. Um, and he said, well, I do get it sometimes still, but really I have it under control because of what I've learned about the brain's role in pain. And that some people, there are stresses in life. That stress could be an injury. That stress could be scoliosis. That stress could be um, a job. That stress could be childhood stress. It could be, you know, general anxiety. It could be, there's so many stresses in life. Um, and that those stresses actually can kind of add to the, to the stew on, mm -hmm. on feeling pain. They're not necessarily all the cause of the, of the original cause of your pain, but they certainly help keep the pain around longer, lingering and, and kind of stop you from getting better. They can. Mm -hmm. And just hearing that I, that I thought to myself, you know, that sounds like my situation, just right. some, something about that ex explanation really sounded like me. Mm. So um, would you mind kind of describing a little bit um, what, what the app does or what it is? Because um, I think the first time I mentioned it, somebody did say, I, I said, oh, if you're, if you're suffering from pain, try this, try this app. I, I thought it was great and I found it really helpful. Now, I was actually, I was curious if other people had tried it out. And then somebody did say to me, oh, just a name curable makes mm. me very suspicious. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That, it's not the first time we've heard that. <laughs> so, so, so what is, um, f yeah, what, what's the, what's the magic about this? Yeah. Why, why are you so confident to call it curable? Mm -hmm. um, and what is it? Because it's not like you go on the app and get lots of painkillers, right? That's not what it does. Well, in a way it does. Thankfully, <laughs> thankfully no, it's not. <laughs> yes, uh, like I said, we've we've heard that. And, and you know, the name, we're, we're, maybe we're overly cl clever with the name, but, you know, it's not, it, it's not cured. It's curable, meaning it's mm -hmm. possible. Okay. It's possible to feel better. Not that, oh, this is a guarantee that you will. Mm -hmm. um, and it's certainly not a guarantee that you will quickly. And it's certainly not a guarantee that you will feel better um, easily, like with, by, by popping a pill. Mm -hmm. It takes time. It takes some work. Um, and there is still in the end, no guarantee. But that's a little explanation on the name. We've, we've heard that. We've, I, I, I thought you might have said the other objection we've heard, which is you mentioned an app for pain. And somebody goes, an app? That's never going right. to happen. Um, okay. <laughs> and those, that's just the beginning. There are many other objections too. Like I said, what do you mean my brain or I'm making it up? Yeah. Um, I would say that many people would, um, describe curable as an app that, um, offers people education. It offers people tools. It offers people techniques, um, to, um, understand pain better. Mm -hmm. and to eventually heal from pain. Um, so, you know, visually speaking, picture it as, a, as an app in, in the app stores or on the, you know, a web browser um, on your computer or phone um, that has a lot of different um, modules and exercises in it. And when I say exercise, I mean kind of brain exercises. Um, you know, from five to 20 minute uh, lessons on neuroscience or on stress or a w whatever it is, the topic. There's also then, you know, action uh, lessons that put the 
person into action. So whether that be uh, mindfulness exercises or cognitive behavioral therapy uh, lessons, um, writing lessons, writing has been shown to be very helpful when it comes to chronic pain. Um, that is, the, I guess, a simple way to explain curable, the curable app as far as how I think many people would explain it. For me, the way I view curable is a community. Um, and we have a large community and it's our job, Curable's job to connect that community to the best um, content, the best people, the best resources to empower people to heal from chronic pain, uh, mm. which means it's more than an app, um, but the app is still the kind of central piece of the puzzle. Mm. Yeah, I, I really like um, how you bring in kind of lots of different act experts together mm -hmm. from like different different fields and um yeah like all this i love that sharing of expertise which is kind of what this is all about here as well that, that there isn't there is not this kind of one person who's got all the the answers and yes. the solutions that's exactly right and you know like i was saying about my friend who is the messenger for me, we can't think that curable the way that we say frame a science lesson is necessarily going to resonate with every person. So we do, we want to hear different, we want to connect people with different voices, different perspectives. There might be something that you would say or something that Dr. Hanscom would say or, and that would really be the thing that somebody thinks, okay, all right, this applies to me and, and this might help me. So yes, that's exactly right is not, we're not trying to say only curable, uh, the only the curable app and the things that curable produces in its recording studio for these science lessons are the things that are gonna help you feel better. It's really, those can help you feel better. And so can all these wonderful people who are doing such incredible work in this field, let's connect you to them too. And, and they might be able to um, help you as well. Mm. Yes. Yeah. So, so for those, another, yeah. sorry to interrupt, Christine, but one more point on that. There's a community element too. So it's I, I want to add a third, not just curable, and and curable's app helping folks, and not just curable's expert network helping folks, but the community members helping each other. That's a mm -hmm. big part of the equation. Right. It's learning from each other, feeling you're not alone. Um, going through a healing process or a feeling better process together with someone, checking your doubts with someone that is not say John Gribben or Curable or David Hanscom, but saying to a peer, hey, are you, do you believe this stuff? Like that stuff is so powerful, being part of a community and being able to experience that with others. Mm. So when you talk about community, is this like, um, is this on the app or is it like a Facebook community or where, where do you, how would you describe it? What a good question. Um, yeah. I think five years ago when we would have said uh, that the definition of community means like, yeah, like a, like something online, like this a is forum a, or, yeah. right, a mm -hmm. forum, you go log into this place and they're, mm. they're I think nowadays we view community as it can kind of be all over. Um, you know, we have 130,000 followers on Instagram. That would be part of a, our community. Mm -hmm. We have over a million users of the Curable app. That would be part of the who, who may or may not be on Instagram. We don't know. That could be part of it. We do have a large Facebook community. We do have a podcast show that 20, 30,000 folks listen to. That's Part of a community they might not be on instagram they might not be app users so um you know we have over i think twenty five thousand clinicians now who prescribe and recommend the curable app to their patients that's part of the community and so are their patients so i guess i feel that community lives everywhere um instead of in one like place you log into mm. Yes, I'm just going to bring on one of the, the, the comments here. So Mina is saying, I always do lots of research about scoliosis. And I just found out that scoliosis can reduce lifespan. And it may not be like that for everyone, but it made me feel so humble. I wonder if it's true. 
Um, is there anything kind of that that comes up for you when you when you read something like that? It certainly comes up lots of things for me, but uh, <laughs> that maybe is related to pain or um, it, yeah, or or maybe even just a kind of a diagnosis of yes. something where you think yes. That's where I was going to go with it, yeah. Christine, and, and I would love to yeah. hear actually your thoughts on the research itself. I don't, I'm not, um, I don't know exactly the research Mina yeah. is referring to, but I do know about research in general, and I do know, of course, about internet research. Yeah. Um, because I've done plenty of it, and very, and not just on my own symptoms, but on, of course, you know, anything. Hmm. Um, and I think that, like you say, you know. People really want, and it's very understandable, especially in Western medicine, people want a diagnosis. They want a name for what their problem is or what they perceive their problem to be. Um, and why that's so understandable is because we feel that if we have a name for it, then we'll have a clear instruction ma manual on what to do about it. Yeah. Um, which is great. And, and a lot of times, you know, if you were diagnosed with cancer or diagnosed, there are certain things that it's like, yes, I need that diagnosis because this is the playbook and we need to follow this playbook. Um, in some cases, pain being one of those things, um, chronic pain, sometimes the diagnosis itself can amplify the symptoms because it, it, it's stressful. Mm -hmm. um, and if, so if one can get, if one can believe that, this, believe the science, not necessarily John, if one can believe the science that stress can amplify pain, then you start to think, okay, what are these things that are stressing me out? And one could be the mere fact that I have this diagnosis. This is stressful. It can also be the fact that I'm doing this research. I'm going down the rabbit hole on, the inter on Google and the internet, reading all the research and seeing that my lifespan might be shortened. By my situation. How stressful is that? Um, th those are kind of things that in certain cases, and again, I don't know Mina and I don't, you know, I'm not saying this is true for everybody. Um, but in certain cases, information like that can add to stress, which can then add to the symptoms. Mm, yes. Yeah, absolutely. So what, what I was just thinking of, I will come back to what, what Nina was saying is, but does this mean that if I don't have any stress, I won't have any pain. Hmm. I don't know anybody who doesn't have any stress. So <laughs> I don't know if that's a, a real a, a reality for anyone. Um, I don't know if it's that clear cut. No, I don't think, I don't think so. I don't, I don't think, well, one, I, I really don't believe that one can fully eliminate stress. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know if even if you fully eliminated it, that you would eliminate all of your symptoms. I, I don't think so. I don't, I believe that there are some either parts of symptoms or entire symptoms themselves that are not necessarily connected to stress. Mm -hmm. So a full elimination of stress won't necessarily make you symptom free uh, going yeah. about your life, you know, but there is a correlation. There mm -hmm. is a correlation between stress and certain symptoms, um, pain, chronic pain being one of them. Um, yeah. so that it's the correlation that we're working on and that if you can reduce one, perhaps you can reduce the other. Mm. Yeah. So, so what I was going to say to, to Mina, um, to my knowledge, there is no research that would suggest that, um, it, it reduces your lifespan. And it was very interesting because a couple of weeks ago, we've actually had a, um, a spinal surgeon on, on the show. And that's his job is to do uh, scoliosis fusion, fusion surgery. And I, and I did say to him, I said um, that sometimes I have people who are like, they are worried, right? They, they have read somewhere, it, uh, I could be ending up in a wheelchair. I, um, it will just get worse. It will get worse and worse and worse. Um, I can die early be because of scoliosis. And he was very clear he, and he said, no, um, that's, that's not true. And kind of the only 
reason why, because you might ask yourself, well, why would I even have a scoliosis surgery? Um, is it doesn't like, uh, unless in very, very rare cases, you know, it can affect like vital organs, but this is very, 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 very rare. Um, it, it's mainly about making sure that you feel happy about yourself. And a lot of times it's, it's also about the way that it looks. Mm -hmm. And I know nobody kind of, uh, everybody hates it when doctors say, or oh, it's, it's a cosmetic reason that sound just it just sounds horrible basically right. that's right. not why anybody has a surgery right um not for a cosmetic reason mm -hmm. but it, but it is part of it it is part of it and it is also about how you feel about your body and how you feel about your scoliosis and in a way, I, I had somebody who said they had surgery because um, they didn't like the, the the unexpected thing about it. That they just wanted um, uh, they just wanted to know what's going to happen. Nobody knows, right? right? Nobody knows what's going to happen. But in a way, they just wanted to kind of be sure it's all fixed right i've got my metal there it's going to hold me in place mm -hmm. and then i've got certainty to kind of a de degree but kind of a long-winded answer but yes no i would not say that i've read anywhere or that anyone i've spoken to would say that it it reduces your lifespan um for sure um Good. So I've got another one here. Laura is saying, many times I wonder how intense really is my pain when it flares up. Is it my brain that makes it unbearable? Do I have to train my willpower to pay less attention to it? I think that's a great question. Mm -hmm. What would you say to that? What I okay. So this, I'm going to actually um, bring back up something you said in your last answer. Uh, that mm -hmm. I thought was really uh, good. And that is, or it, it reminded me almost to say that I think we all, or many of us um, want this kind of black and white uh, answer that, okay, it, my pain is either structural, which mm -hmm. in the case of scoliosis, there are structural elements at play mm -hmm. that are just undeniable. You can't yeah. you know, say that these things are concocted by the brain, you know, mm -hmm. um, it's either all structural or it's all, um, you know, in, in uh, a fabrication or an invention of my brain. Yeah. Um, but really the case in, I, I would say with, with all of us, um, whether you have scoliosis, whether you don't have scoliosis, whether you have pain symptoms or not, it's a mixture. It's you have structural elements going on in your body and you have brain um, centric uh, symptoms going on in your body. And they're talking to each other. You know, as you said, the, the way you might feel about some of your structural um, issues might actually then, you know, either create or elongate certain symptoms. Um, so it's all kind of mixed in there. It's really hard to isolate one or the other. And I think what, what Curable is trying to say is that let's at least work on the brain, the stress, the emotional side of it to mm -hmm. get that as reduced as possible. And then, you know, what other elements you have left, structural, you know, tissue damage, things like that, then those are, um, those can be resolved in, hopefully in other ways or, or managed. Um, and so to answer Laura's question, um, you know, giving attention to pain um, is has been shown to that it can amplify symptoms and taking away attention from pain or giving it less attention um, has been shown to help. Uh, but it is not necessarily that, you know, she's asking away, do I have to train my willpower to pay less attention to it? Um, that can help many people that approach mm -hmm. it may or may not help Laura. And, and I think it would be incumbent upon Laura to, to give that a try um, and see if that is helpful for her because mm. different methods are helpful for each of us. 
Um, for me, what Laura is describing is very helpful. Mm. If I feel pain, which I do still often, you know, regularly, um, if I go, you know what, stop, just shut up. You know, my foot, like this week, my foot is hurting for some reason, like uh, underneath it. And then I'm like, this is stop, stop bothering me. That actually is helpful for me. Um, and some folks, the, the attention thing is, is less helpful. So I would encourage Laura to experiment with it. Um, different methods like taking attention away um, and see how that goes for her. Mm. Yeah, because I mean, how do we even decide? Is this maybe something that needs to be investigated further? That's always the, that adds to the stress of it. Absolutely. Oh my gosh, here I am waiting multiple days to get, not give attention to it when I should really be going to the emergency room or going mm. to the, I mean, that is part of the, of the true challenge here. And it's part of the real challenge for somebody in a virtual setting on video to, to say as well that, hey, don't just pay less attention to it um, when really you should maybe be going to see a physician. Um, <laughs> but I, what my point is in general, generally speaking, there are a number of pain, pain situations and pain symptoms that don't always need to be, you don't need to run into a doctor that you, that are, that are amplifications of the brain. Hmm. Yes. And for that. me, this is just me personally. I go to those first. I, when I, when yeah. I feel foot pain, I don't run to get an injection. I go, let me give this a few days to see if it is a brain uh, created situation. Mm. Yeah. And usually it is. And then I'm mm. happy to run in. Sometimes something lingers for a bit and I say, I, I, sh I should get this looked at. Mm. Yeah. And I mean, there ha truly there have been a number of occasions when I when I used the app and um, I was like, well, it, you know, I can always go and see a doctor, right? It's it's still there if 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 I need it, but I'm just going to try this, um, especially if it's something like back pain where you you think, oh, have I done something, right? Mm -hmm. Is there, was there whatever, I, I've overdone it or there's kind of something that is like gripping and tightening and spasming. Yes. If it doesn't go away, I can always see an osteopath or whatever, I can always see someone. Yes. But let me try this in the meantime. It takes five minutes. <laughs> That's right. That That is what I would do too. Yeah is try um, first, try to yeah. work on the brain a little bit first and see if there's a connection between stress, the brain and the pain. Hmm. And you always have, you know, a physician or, or somebody to yeah. fall back on if that, it, it, you know, the symptoms aren't going away. Hmm. Yes. And, and, and also what the other thing that helped me was to think of it. Sometimes stress is just some, is a word that is kind of overused. Mm -hmm. um in a way mm, nowadays and but kind of when we look from the the movement perspective and on that side we also like stress you know stress is also good yes, for the good, body good point yes in in certain ways so that's why i don't it's not a it's not my favorite way to think about it um because you know for for things like bone density we do want a bit of stress to the body right, right. but it, it's a different way of using the word so what helped me was the just the term of it's a it's a threat to my brain right yeah, well, thinking right. about it there is some sort of threat and my brain has decided that it would be good for me to have pain right now yeah which is a wonderful characteristic of the brain it, that is why we remain alive is because yeah. our brains, uh, you know, get signals from the outside, uh, from our, from fingers and bones and all over or, and, mm. and signals from, you know, what we sense, see and hear and, um, and trigger a danger signal and say, Hey, this, I'm going to put pain here so that you take your hand off the stove. Mm -hmm. Or so yeah. that you your injured need you don't run a marathon on it. Um, mm -hmm. that, thank goodness for the brain giving us pain signals. 
Mm. Uh, because when it when it when there is uh, when there are threats in the environment, the brain needs to be there for us. Mm. And all we're saying, all that you and I are saying here, Christine, I think you you're right. Stress is not the best word for it. It is more of a um, it's the brain sending out pain danger signals when it's not necessarily required mm. to, to, to stay off of something or to take your hand off the stove or because there's a threat in the environment, there's a snake in the bushes or it or, or that you've been bitten by a snake from the bushes. Um, those are that's the brain saying, hey, pain, let's go. Um, but the brain can also do that when it perceives other threats. So that are not necessarily, you know, so physical in nature. So like a snake bite. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's what we're saying here is that the brain can send out pain signals for a variety of different dangers that it perceives. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that might not be a snake bite, but it might have been a, a conversation with your mother-in-law or something like that. Exactly. Right. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that's right. A conversation. that Interpersonal relationships, those are major uh, danger. Those can send, give us the brain major danger signals, yes. Yeah, yeah. So it, it just brings to mind one of the exercises was, so I have tried kind of to do a, um, a few different ones, and some of them are just kind of listening to and like educating yourself. I love the one which is like seven statements about pain, which I thought was like brilliant. You know, it takes one minute. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, but then another one was, it was kind of a relaxation, which is right up our street, obviously, here um, <laughs> on this channel. Certainly, you know, you can build it into your yoga practice, even in your relaxation at the end. You listen to to, to one of these things, especially if you're, uh, you know, if you're in acute, something is, is happening right now. And that particular one was, it was very simple. It was like, are you holding a grudge? <laughs> <laughs> Which you probably are. <laughs> Most of us Most of are us holding are, yeah. some sort of grudge. And I was like, yeah, I probably am. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it was, the, it was a very simple one. And, you know, it totally worked. <laughs> yeah. It, it works um, for me too. You know, a lot of my, when I feel, when I experience pain, the stress as we're calling it, or the danger signal for me, um, is when I, when I dig in on it and do my own work on it, um, is something around anger, something around being mad, you know, mm -hmm. and, and not being able to really, it, what we live in a society, I can't go around being mad. So yeah. I can't really express that. I, I don't, I can't really let that out. And so, um, we all get mad about stuff, you know, and, and we're all encouraged to bottle it up. Mm -hmm. And so I think over time, bottling up your anger, whether it could be about your diagnosis, yeah, you know, it could be about the fact that you, this happened to you, you know, um, could be about what you perceive someone else having done to you mm -hmm. uh, or a number of different things. And, mm -hmm. and when that, you know, when that stays inside and increases bottles up, um, one of the ways that my brain re reacts to that is by saying, okay, danger. And we're going to put this pain in your back. And that's because mm. that, that's what we're experiencing right now is, is a threat. Mm. Yes. So do you think, because I'm just seeing, I'm seeing one of the names here. So uh, we've got one of our, our shine members is here. And I know that she's gone through um, knee surgery very recently. Because obviously we've kind of been mainly talking about chronic stress, uh, chronic pain. Do you think it would be helpful for someone who's kind of recovering from an from an injury as well, or surgery yes. in this? <laughs> so, yes, <laughs> but with maybe a different um, perspective. Mm -hmm. So again, I think the goal when it comes to a surgery like a knee surgery is that in six months, in twelve months, you, you're you're not experiencing pain. Mm -hmm. I think that yeah. it is the nature of the surgery that in six days after you're going to have pain, you know, that's, yeah. that's the acute nature of pain. That is the, now these tissues are damaged. You have been cut open. A lot of things have been reorganized. 
um, you're going to have acute pain symptoms. Mm-hmm. So the goal is how, how do I avoid not, you know, pain in six months, in, in 12 months. So I have kind of a permanent healing, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think then it's the mindset and the confidence that you will, that there will be a time where you're um, not feeling the same way you feel today. And that you do have to, and this is where you bring up a great point, Christine, you do have to actually stress it. Do what your physios advise. Do what, you know, your your physician advises on the rehab. And mm-hmm. that's, the rehab is the least fun part of surgery, um, of a knee surgery. You know, I've had wrist surgeries and, oh, that's pain. It's hard. You have to work through all that. Put stress mm-hmm. there and, and do, you know, what heed the advice you've been given because it's good for it. And you're going to get through that and you, and to have the comp, not, not like, um, be too gentle on it or be too, you know, you, you kind of have to just have this confidence that you're going to be, you're going to feel better in six months. Mm. So I would say that is different than like your, you point out, um, post-surgical mindset is different than the, I don't know really what's wrong, you know, why I have this pain and, um, it could be from various danger signals mindset. Those are slightly different, but connected by an optimism connected by, you know, this belief that you will feel better. Mm. Yes. I love that. So Laura, Laura was just, just adding that undoubtedly stress is one of the triggers for feeling that pain. So you obviously acknowledge right. that, which is, which is great. No. <laughs> And, and I like clear, clear, clarifying that word stress, you know, it's, we, we think of stress, it just means like my job or yeah. my, you know, my apartment or my, you know, like that is stressful, mm-hmm. but the word to me is more along the lines of what you're saying, which is like the, the you know, these, these factors that are just pressing in on you that you feel mm-hmm. are pressing in on you. And that could be stuff related to experiences earlier in your life. That could be the, the symptom itself. It is stressful to have pain. And mm-hmm. that's where the, then the cycle goes around and around. Um, it, you know, anger is stress, um, anxiety, you know, all of these, all of these things are what I would put into the definition of stress, not just, you know, like what we say, like yeah. stress, be more, be more mindful. You know, it's not, it's more the way more than that. In my definition of stress. Mm, Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much. This, this has been, um, this has been amazing, John. Uh, What, what would you say? What's, what's kind of the best way for people to get started um, with all of this? I think if, if folks are interested, they can visit our website, Mm curable.com. Um, and there's a number of resources on there that, you know, uh, uh, no, at no cost to folks. We have a couple of podcast shows and a variety of resources, and you'll see our scientific advisory board there. And then if, if people do want to explore deeper, um, they can go into the Curable app. And um, I think you have a link maybe to that, Christine. Of, of, yes. Of that. Yes. So you've given us kind of a six week free trial offer yes. which is fantastic um for, for your, would, community, your listeners for yeah. our community yes and i think um that very very generous and um i think it's such a great way to re- like really so you know use that time as well and um you know don't just download the app and then forget about it <laughs> <laughs> that right <laughs> you and know so- T- take the time it's a bit it's a take, take the time yes. yes yeah exactly so it's just like with yoga i always say this yoga doesn't work if you don't do it mm-hmm. um <laughs> well, couldn't have said it any better really yes <laughs> so um and it doesn't take a lot of time you know you you just maybe need five minutes a day or every couple of days even and just do one of the one of the things and um it's very i find it very clear as well you you are kind of guided through the 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 process as well of where you're kind of where you want to go next and 
what you could maybe try, which I really, really appreciate as well. Well, thank you for having me. I, I mm -hmm. hope it's helpful for folks and um, at least addressing the, you know, the brain side of um, what might be their symptoms. And um, I appreciate you and me having this conversation. Yes. Thank you so much. Stay on a minute and um, yeah, we'll, we'll close the chat. Thank you so much. Um, everyone who's listened as well. I'm delighted um, because it's not kind of an, a, a quick fix topic or anything like that. So I, I really, really appreciate everyone um, being here and, and listening to us. There's lots of thank yous coming in right now. <laughs> thank you all. Yes, absolutely. All right.